What's going on here? Time to stick a locker in the Hilux. A locker? What do you mean a locker? What locker? The auto locker. L-O-K-K-A -K -K locker. Oh, we better have a look at that in a minute. So what are you doing? Draining the diff oil. Because we've obviously got to get the diff center out. Let's have a look at that. It's got a little bit of grey in it. Could add a little bit of water in there. We'll have a look at the... In a minute anyway. So what else you done here at the moment? You've got the ABS sensor out of the way just in case. They've got the drums off. That looks like about it at the moment, is that right? Yeah, I'm the diff oil, that's good. Brake line along the back here. Oh Brake yeah. Line supports. Yep, in case it yanks on there or whatever. Oh no, look at all the metal on the diff. That's nah, all normal, mate. No dramas. Have a play with it. That's it. Show everyone what it normally looks like. That's pretty normal. Bit of wear and tear. That's all good. When you start seeing chunks of metal, then you know you're in trouble. <laughs> One of these lockers. Okay, well, that'll be uh, good to compare to my, what have I got in True the back? Track. True Track, yeah, which is, you know, it's like an 80, 90% thing, but this is a this is a 100% option. Did have that in the rear of the 120. Let's, uh, I'll get it open and we'll have a look what's in there. Year to go anywhere. Yeah, it looks right to me. It looks like the right bits and pieces from uh, when I did mine in the 120. It looks about right. I mean, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, you'd hope they gave you the right look, you know. Yeah, those little d tents and the springs and whatever. Yep. 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 Oh, and you can see how it kind of works, right? Not exactly that, that one there, it goes to that, yeah, it will make more sense, won't it? Anyway, you can't do it one again, so, happy days, look at that, right, so. Lock. Lock when it spins faster, okay, cool. Yeah, much easier on uh, the Hilux, because when you undo these back bolts, one, two, th three, four, yeah, the whole thing comes out in one piece. On the Prado, you got to get those handbrake shoes off. They're a pain in the butt. So, I don't know, is that all right with that bit of oil coming out there like that? There's not meant to be oil there. So, what year is this again? 2014. 14. How many Ks? 145. So, with that sort of age on it, that's enough for these seals to start deteriorating. There's seals in behind here. We'll have a look at them later. And it's just allowing a bit of uh, oil pass. What's going on in this one? Is this one the same? Well, this one looks like it's got a bit of water. Maybe it's got in there. Yep. And as you can see... That could be getting past that O-ring. So what we'll do, we'll clean up the O-ring and the sensor and we'll put a bit of molly coat on the O-ring. And what you've got to do when you put these things in is make sure they're centralised sort of thing. Like if you, when you do, if they're sort of, if there's pressure pushing to one side, you can squash an O-ring more on one side and have not enough pressure on the other. So just make sure it's nice and neat centre and hold it there as we do up the bolt. For example, if you're doing up the bolt and it twisted it and pushed it around, you know, and made it go sort of this way, then the O-ring at this side is gonna be pushing hard and you'll have a bit of looseness. So maybe that's mm -hmm. it. The molly coat helps it slip in, centralize, whatever. But I can't see water have got in anywhere else. Um, but we'll have a look in this diff oil. And I can't get from there, because this there's a seal in behind here. All right, I have to get it all out actually to look at it to remember 100%. <laughs> but yeah, I believe the seal's in behind here, right? You're that's with right, me, yeah? yeah so that stops all the diff oil that's that way on the left side to stay. That only lubricates the center, all the bearings and that there. This is a sealed bearing, what's out here, and um, the seal's here. So if there's any oil here, that's a little bit getting past the seal. I don't think it's a big deal, but what we'll do, we'll replace the, um, the seal. Um, if there's oil here from memory, I think that means the oil, some oil may have come through the bearing. I have to again, I have to get it out. <laughs> you know, it's all a bit confusing when you look at it like this. All I don't, you know, pull out hundreds of them. It's like you know, the odd one every now and then. But from memory, on the Prado as well. So if you see oil on the outside, if you get oil out here to your handbrake, if it gets messy, it gets to the point that it's messy in here. You've had a heap of oil go through your bearing, which washes the grease out and reduces its life. And you'll still get tens of thousands of k's out of even once it's wet out here. But of course, you don't want to be on a big trip somewhere going across, you know, thousands of kilometres and then have a bearing fail, have play and it get noisy and, you know, Definitely. whatever, good luck with that. So, that. But I'm pretty sure with that amount of oil, I'm not worried about it. So we'll clean it all up. We'll put new seals in there. Um, that's what I did in my Hilux. And um, this will be the two test guinea pigs. So everyone should probably subscribe and put the bell on. And not miss, we're going to do some comparisons on the tracks. If you want to see how these lockers work, um, 4 before Adventures, the other YouTube channel, spelt the same as 4 before Diesel, except Adventures, one word. 
and we're going to show you, you know, how this locker works compared to the true track. And then, of course, you've got another one of these going in the front as well eventually. So, happy days. So, you're taking the brake line off. You've got it clamped up there. Beautiful. Um, this handbrake cable will have to come off. Take the clamp off up here to allow the movement of this. Take the bolts out to hold the cable in because we need to get the handbrake cable out, obviously. Same reason why to disconnect the brake line to allow this assembly, this axle to come out. And then once the axles are out, uh, propeller shaft. These bolts here. And you can probably just do one end and tie it up, whatever, you know. Okay, so with the axles out, having a look. That's that bit of grease that's been washed out of the bearing. Have a look through it. And these are the seals we're going to replace. So the bearing is this side of the seal. So of course, only oil should be on that side of the seal. So if there's oil this side, means a little bit of oil has come past the seal. It's sort of washed. This is, you're probably going to, so everyone's going to have a panic attack now. No, no, no. You're probably going to find this on most Prados and Hiluxes, right? Um, I'm going to say on Prados, more likely around the 250, 300K from what I've seen, from the ones I've had out. Um, the Hiluxes, well, this one's only done 150. It's not a massive problem. Just because some of the grease has come out doesn't mean it's doomed and you've got to change the bearings. Um, personally, again, in the videos, we'll let you know how long these bearings last if there's any issues with them, but it's going to go back together with a bearing with a new seal because, of course, the seal was going to prevent any more oil coming past it. Let's have a look at the other side. Same thing at this side. Same story. Maybe, was this the side that had the water? I don't know. It was the other side that had the water, wasn't it? Yeah, but this one's got a little bit grey in the grease. But anyway, whatever. Yeah, propeller shaft off. Getting a little, uh, getting all the washes. You don't want to lose mm. those. That's good, yeah. And then uh, this thing, careful it doesn't fall out, but I don't think it's going to fall out on you. Normally what we do is leave one nut at the top, just in case, worst case scenario. I'll, got, I'll back you up here. Good idea, eh? <laughs> just keep the top, just keep the top nut on there, just in case, and do that last when you're ready to lift it out. Beautiful. What's the diff? Not much diff. Do we Basket need to change that gasket? gasket? Well, you do, yeah, yeah. But that's amazing. It stays. It looks like the uh, Prado one because it's two different. I'm sure it's the Hilux one. This is the Hilux, but the Prado one, mate, because it's usually better quality than the Hilux one. It stays in. <laughs> I've got the Prado one and the Hilux one. I reckon they're the same. One made in Japan, one made in Thailand. That's the diff. All right, so what do we got to do? Basically, the, I'm going from 10 year memory without looking at any instructions. We just got to change the guts in there. So basically, mark everything before we touch it. So mark where these are both sides. Yeah, mark these both sides. Take notice of the depth as well, right? So I don't know how many turns. We'll get a texture on there so you can see, you know, so you're not like a full turn in or out. Because obviously, we're not changing the bearings or anything. So put it back exactly how it was. Take a note of the angle of this, just mark the house, you know, we'll clean it up and just really mark it crazy. Mm -hmm. To change all this, we've got to take the crown wheel off. So that means all these have to come off, blah, 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 from memory. So check that in case you don't, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's all in there. Like, you know, you can't, you've got to get the ring gear off the crown wheel. They call it, people call it a ring gear, mate. They make a make crown wheel, crown wheel. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, from memory, knock, the, knock these pins out. I don't think anything holds them. It's just interference fit. I think there's a roll pin in there. Might, yeah, that rings a bell. There might be a roll pin at one end. That makes sense. But uh, we'll get to that. That'd be uh, that'd be the one there, yeah? yeah. That white thing in there. And, um, yeah, basically take out these spider gears. And put the other stuff in as per some picture we can find on the internet. Probably off the L-O-K-K-A website. Locker, Hopefully. whatever. And then just chuck it back together like a lunchbox. All right, <laughs> let's have a look, see what happens. Mate, you are serious. This uh, diff center's coming out. Look at that. Yeah, just pop the uh, race over on each side. You know, which side's which still. To be quite honest, mate, with the quality of these bearings, you probably swap them around. It wouldn't make any difference. There's going to be virtually nowhere. And, you know, look at that. Bearing's beautiful, mate. You know, that's why you don't change them. So, we'll just leave that there. Now we've got to straighten all these out and get those bolts out. Mm -hmm. Did you check the instructions at all? Or were we just rolling with memory no, from just, 10 years ago? Yeah. yeah. And you watched a couple <laughs> yeah, of I videos. I watched a couple of videos, right? yeah. 
Yeah, so do that sound right. Yeah. Flatten those, it. undo those again with your gun. Mm -hmm. And then that will hopefully just drop off and then we're getting to the business end of the deal. All right, chiseling, what are you chiseling with? Bit of a change from knocking nails in. Just be careful with these things because they do break off. You're gonna usually if people do this, they're gonna maybe break a couple. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Put a bit of Loctite on the bolts, torque them up. As long as you've got one would be good, or some Loctite, one or the other, a bit of both. So make sure that on the, this is not a tradesman thing where you motivate it, you know. Mm. The tradesman motorbike thing, we don't do that in the, in the automotive Prada hospital, Hilux hospital, whatever you want to call it. No motorbiking. Some of them you might have to flatten a bit more to make sure you get the socket on. Yeah, yeah that's it. That. Just general tap, mate. These, these bloody tradesmen, I don't know. I think I know what went wrong, mate. 90% of uh, um, mechanics, vehicle technicians, whatever they're called, they're meant to be tradesmen, maybe plumbers or something. Plumbers are pretty rough. Sorry to all the plumbers, mate. Get the hacksaw <laughs> out. The most unstraight cut you can ever see, mate. Chuck some glue on there. Bit of mud and dirt. Doesn't matter. She'll be right, mate, you know. No, you know, in the automotive industry, uh, you know, we don't roll like that. Well, only the tradies. No, the, just the 90 percenters. How many plumbers are working? Should we pick on some sparkies? Now, yeah, we know there's heaps of awesome plumbers and sparkies, but... You know, mate, cut the wire, twist it, get the insulation cut at the right spot, put it in the terminal properly, do a screw so it goes into the copper, not into the, not into the plastic. Malaka. All right, beautiful. So we'll lift those off and uh, it'll be gentle tap, tap, tap. They've seen it in another video around here and that'll come off. And I don't think we're going to need to heat this one or anything to put it back on, but we will soon see. Now, have you marked this one to know what position it is? No. Well, let's do that. The bolts and everything don't matter, but look, I would just personally like to get it in the same spot. It probably might not matter, but obviously it's set up to everything being exactly where it is. So when I say mark everything, I mean everything, everything. Let's mark everything. Oh, no, you can't hit the crandle with that. It's like tiling, mate. You know when you scrub a tile and then it breaks? That's oh, what happens yeah. if you do that, mate. You can't do that. I'm just joking, actually. So, yeah, it's all good, mate. Yeah, well, mate. Could be true. Could be true. It's hard. Is it true or not? True it's or false? Just, this is a true or false, mate. Your ping bunch is not very good anymore. Come on, man. Oh, it's not very good anymore because <laughs> you hit that hard, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks, sir. Yeah. Well, we've got a grinder over there. We can uh, we can make it back into a pin again. But anyway. Yeah, what's this, the old, is this an Australian made um, old Stanley I've got here? I think they were made in Australia back then, yeah, that's an old Australian made one. Beautiful, maybe, maybe not. It'd be good to get a nice drift for that. Yeah, you can get a nice soft hammer, or I'm not worried about it. that's what I, no, 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 i got a pin punch for that. Mate, now you're using the sharp chisel, just stop, just stop. Bloody trade. Try oh, that, at least it's flat, mate, instead of a uh, sharp chisel putting my... Gentle tap, work your way around, bang, bang. You got a nice spot in the bench just to land, yeah? It's about to go boom on the bench, man, so just be aware of that. Uh, a bit more over this side, yeah. All it is now is a matter of keeping it even. And it's going to go boom like that. There it goes. Double check your marks are still there. <laughs> and you know where you can recognise them before you get excited. We've got here. Beautiful. Okay. So, I reckon now's a good time to... Now, I remember something about this. I went, oh, I got it out. And I went, oh, how are we going to get that back in? So, there's a trick to this. It's a, an easy trick. It's just because I'm not a diff specialist. This has been mm. bruised over. I've got to try and open that up a bit. How did that happen? That's what they do. The roll pin goes in. That's how it's retained there. Do they? Yeah. Right. Does it say that in instruction somewhere? You know yeah. that pin punch we used? That actually the one that's gone blunt? I reckon that going in there. I've got a series of um, punches and stuff there. What do you reckon? We're certainly not experts at this, but... What do you people? Let us know in the comments, mate. But uh, yeah, well, that won't help us at the moment. Um, this is more of a DIY thing, mate, you know? All the diff specialists, they know more than us. 
someone that's watched all the videos on YouTube's on discs knows more than us. We've got to punch it out down through there. That's it. That's it. I'm just trying to remember what there was some. It was only minor, some minor complication when I did. I went, oh, you know. So what do you reckon? Just smash it out and it'll straighten itself out as it comes out. That's what I think. But mm -hmm. could damage the roll mm -hmm. pin a bit. Mm. Let's. Uh, I still reckon. Let's. We're going to go spend a bit of time and uh, see if we can do something with that. Yeah. Oh, there's an idea. Just put it. Hit it. If we're going to get a smaller arm um, punch, hit it out that way. And then, can it come out that way? Can it go either way, can't it? Do you mind lifting that up? I want to get, was it sticking out the other side or? Mm. How long is this roll? Yeah, it comes out that side, yeah. So what stops it coming back out this side? I'm not sure, maybe there's a step in the hole or something. Hmm. Because this one's not burnt over and that one is. Interesting. That's definitely what the instructions had. Yeah. Put it in what do the instructions say to do? Get rid of the burr, didn't say how to do it, you know? So oh, you get rid of that. Okay, cool. Well, let's get rid of it because well, they want to hit it out that way then, mm -hmm. don't they, for sure? Okay, let's do that. Then. So we got the selection of all the old punches and we carefully selected what we thought was the right one. That was this one. Not better than focus for you. We give it a tap and there we've got a hole again. So now we can spin it around, yeah, I reckon. It a bit more. A little bit more, yeah, give it a bit more if you we've want. We've got a different yeah, size. Yeah, a few there. different sizes, yeah. yeah. That looks like it's going in the hole though, yeah. I reckon we've got most of it, enough that mm -hmm. when we punch it from the other side, it's gonna come out. Now, quick question for you. Have mm -hmm. I got bad breath, have you noticed? No. No, we haven't either, so that's good. It was a pretty close, uh, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we need a pin, maybe. What about this one, maybe? Mm -hmm. mm, anything else there? Yeah, that could be the one, at least to an extent that we might have to get something else happening. something else but now that it's loose let's just flip it and have a look and see if it's poking its head out so we know where we're at mm -hmm. yep beautiful yep happy mm, days oh maybe. that broke away that's right that'll be all right we'll still be able to burr it we just got to make sure we uh so this is the thing with metal isn't it fatigue you bend it in you bend it out mm -hmm. and you know what happens don't you right mm -hmm. um maybe some super glue <laughs> maybe some loctite maybe Need we'll, we'll burr it over but i'm just saying we can maybe put something else there as well Obviously, we just want to make sure it's not going to come out, right? Everyone know what's going on here. Let's see what's happened. Not, maybe, kind of, sort of. My theory is this little Stanley strain made through. That was another strain, maybe. It's just, it's not a lot of pressure. A gentle tap with a smaller hammer. And um, I reckon it's going down. I reckon it's going to pop out. My suspicion was correct. And it should be just the right length. Built for the job. <laughs> Look at that, perfect. You think I'd done it before? No, I didn't remember that. I don't remember much from 10 years ago. I remember that uh, we put it in and it worked. Works really well, it does. A little bit click, 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 mm. But, you know, sometimes, not too bad. What's it look Take like? It back to the other bench. That's it, that looks good. Yeah, this is the more hammer it hard bench. So we've done that. The other one, yeah, we've got more space. So let's leave all this stuff here. Do you reckon you can know how to make it all fall to pieces? I reckon we just push this pin out. Is that the right finger? Mm-hmm. What do you reckon now? It's getting crazy. Can we rotate that around or pull this out? Man, you're like a diff specialist now. Pretty straightforward that when it's an open diff when it's an lsd there's a few more bits and pieces that's what i dealt with on the back of it this is just like even easier is there nothing else in there is that it like butter bing yeah, mate how simple is goes. that mate right that is where the locker goes now we just need those locker bits they reckon check this shaft for where it's a toyota mate sweet continue all right so there's no wear there wouldn't even be anything to measure mate lucky it's even put a mark on it just about to see yourself in the mirror on that one. Anyway, what's got to happen with this? Where do these pins go? Okay, so we've got to put a bit of grease on them. So they sort of stay in place and don't fall out, yeah? Don't mm -hmm. be scared. Go heavy with the grease, mate, you know? They'll be stuck in this suction. 
Is that the right mm. hole? You got a number of holes to put in me. <laughs> go there. That one. See how that goes. And if it's wrong, <laughs> you can change it later. So I've sort of actually forgotten, as simple as it is. I mean, obviously we can see. It should hold them in there nicely. Yeah, that's right. Because that offset, so you've got to put them in those ones because you need the slotted ones so you can put the springs in later. Because mm -hmm. these pins, you just push it down and then get the spring in between, yeah? That's it. Remember something about a bit of grease. Don't worry about the grease. A bit of excess grease aren't going to hurt any dip components. Happy days. And that'll go in there. First one, not man. Just this other yeah. middle one. Yeah. Oh, that can. Yeah, I think so these two, they're the same as each other, aren't they? They're same, same. It's yeah, just yeah. that goes there. Yeah. That's it. That one can go in first, and this one's got to go spacer facing towards the pin, the flat side of that spacer. Yep. It's got two sides. Yep. Flat side towards the centre, towards the pin. Yeah. Towards this pin. That isn't there yet. We'll get to that. Okay, I've got one finger in the top just holding everything back. So one hand's taken there. You've got one hand there. I've got a spare one here, let me know worst case scenario, <laughs> but I'll try and stick to being a cameraman. Eh? that up. There you go. So That's now beautiful. springs if they haven't been lost. <laughs> I want that little screwdriver. Yep that little yellowy to help pop them in. I should be able to push this pin down. Oh, just push it up and then click the bottom one. I reckon by hand, I'd go the opposite way, but yeah, you could be right, whatever works. Yeah, that's good. I like that way. Good system, just don't let it can go. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit tight to go in. Anyway, I think they know what we're trying to do. What four of these to do? Make so. them look hard. Maybe try it the other way, what you were saying. Yeah, maybe up and then just get the screwdriver in the last little slot of the spring and lift it up because it gives you less compression there. Maybe, possibly. Either way, you don't want to lose it. That's the key thing. I'd be using fingers and the screwdriver, yeah. That's what I'd be doing. That's it. So that's going to help if that separates too. So you're lifting the whole thing up. Yeah, beautiful. So close. You can't press anymore because the angle you've got the screwdriver on, you're hitting the lock here. You've got to be around the front here with the screwdriver. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you're there now. Just a little bit more of a lift. Tell you what else could help. Stick in a spacer or something in between here to keep that sort of spread apart because it wants to keep dropping down. But there you go, that one's in. 
you got to spin it and do that four more times. See what I mean? It's on a big angle. So once you get the second one in, mm -hmm. the third and fourth, you'll be laughing. See what I mean? Like if you jam a screwdriver in, just keep that spread apart. It might be helpful, you know? That one, yeah. I'm sure the professionals that do it regularly have got some set space, I think. of the coil. Yeah. That's it. Starting to look good. Now we flip it upside down. Or right side up. Depends how you look at it. Yeah. It's all right side up now. Looks like it went where it's happy. And there now it goes. it's happy, that's it. I was thinking it's not looking quite happy yet. Make sure they're now both happy all happy. the way, yep. Okay, and drop this pin into its little house. This one will be easier to access. We try it the other way. Um, brave, are we? Look, I don't reckon it really matters, but no good down in there though. <laughs> Won't be magnetic either. <laughs> I've got a little pick, we'll get it. <laughs> so now we're pulling the whole thing apart again. <laughs> there we go, that's looking better. <laughs> Safety glasses on. Beautiful. Yeah, just triple check it all at the end. Happy days. One more. Beautiful. And okay, what do you do with this? Just throw it in. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't have spare parts. No, no, no. Just stick this back in with that. Which the, way? Facing the. You sure? Up, down, left, right. Both I don't sides think the up same. And down matters. Both but sides look the same. But the hole's got to match up with that. Can we work out which way it was to put it the know. same way, even though it doesn't matter? No. How do we know? Should we think about whether it matters or not, or should we just go, no, it doesn't no, matter? No, just, just chuck it in. Beautiful. That's what I was thinking. Okay, space has dropped down in there. That ain't gonna go through there. <laughs> mm, probably should have put a bit of grease on that spacer too. That would have helped us. She's in. That's what I call almost back together. The magic roll thing. Randy somewhere. This is the magic disappearing roll pin. And you want to put that the same way as well. If you, can it be worked? It doesn't really matter, but can we work it out? I just like to put things back exactly how it was. It's kind of got a little taper on one side. Mm -hmm. I don't think it matters, mate, to be honest. I think it's same, same. We're going to need a firmer bench position. Back over to the bench with the punches. Bloody tradesman, mate. Take it easy. Slow down, mate. Take it easy, mate. Here, get this punch now. Start working it through this. Uh, mate, you're nearly going to... Pins properly. Yeah, well, that's right. You just got to slow down, mate. <laughs> mate you're out of control. <laughs> that's probably too big, but, you know, um, that's what I had in my hand. Right, maybe... Hey, you got blood on the back of your thing. What happened there? What are you doing, mate? Claret. Unbelievable. Well, get this bit of metal out of there, can you? This bit of metal there, just... 
said this, so anyway, whatever. Come on, hit it. <laughs> that's it, that's home, you can hear it. That's home. Now, what are we gonna do there? Yeah, we can bust, bang it over at this side, mm. or we can uh, put some sort of something in there. Mm. What do you feel like now? Get something bigger. We'll get a bigger chisel for it because we all want to get a couple of salt. We don't want to be banging away, just putting marks on it, not bending it's cast, right? I reckon we get something a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And really, because look, we're, it's what's left is kind of thick material. We need to probably this side here. I reckon a big flat, you know, that big flat chisel I used to bang out those CV shafts, right? That's Let's grab yeah, that. Yeah, that big one, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. thinking sort of like this. I'm thinking like that. That's what I'm thinking. Personally, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, like that, I reckon, yeah. I reckon it's not coming out now. That's it. Even just like that. Look at that. That's all you need. I mean, you can go more, but that's not going to come out. You'd have to be whacking it hard at the other end. It's not going to just fall out. You know what I mean? Unless you want it, you can hit it again if you want. But I can see enough, uh, you know, on that side there. Because the idea is, you know, no one's whacking it out. It just can't fall out, right? Mm -hmm. Can't fall out now. It can move a little bit, worst case scenario, but it's not going to matter. So, But it's not going to move anyway. So, yeah. All right, what do we do now? Do we need to muck around with this and make sure it all works sort of thing? Let's have a look on the other bench and just have a look and do a video. I can't remember. Is there, do we need to do any... Oh, there's unlock tests and that once it's in the vehicle. But mm -hmm. is there any... Measurements and things we're meant to check with this as well, or not yes. really? There is, eh? Are we going to check it or are we just going to slap it together and put it in? Because yeah. I reckon <laughs> we should. We should, yeah. Okay, what do you got? Do you know what the measurements are? We've got to go back to the books. We don't make mistakes at the Prado Hospital. Well, I'm not the Prado Hospital. Okay, actually, if we rewind this, so we're going to edit this, but we're not going to edit. We're going to, yeah, if we rewind, I reckon when those spider gears came out, I sort of went. Is there anything else there? Whatever, no, and there didn't look like yeah. there was anything there, but neither of us were sort of thinking because the yeah. thrust washers were sitting on the back of the spider yeah, gear yeah. still. So, so much of a hurry. That's it, bloody tradesman. Anyway, <laughs> good practice for the uh, front locker. So pull it all, you'll get good at this. So at the moment, we're going to pull it all apart. We're going to take a few measurements, muck around a bit. You can see some other videos on YouTube where people have done things twice, whatever, whatever. This happens a lot, but it doesn't. We don't make mistakes at the Prado Hospital. Yeah, but he's not the Prado Hospital. But I'm sort of helping him say, so maybe we can count it as half Prado Hospital. Anyway, we're going to pull it apart again, muck around, and continue from there. So what are you doing? Just measuring the, the tolerance between the spacer and the shaft. But it's Toyota parts, mate. And if they've manufactured this stuff, it'll just be Mickey Mouse. True. Happy days. All right, so it's got to be between that and that, and it is, so... Continue putting it back together again, how we did the first place, but including the thrust wash. Thrust wash. Now, is there any more thrust? Is there just two? You want two. to check those other bits and pieces, make sure there's nothing else? No, nothing Let's have else. a look, yeah, nothing else, no? I mean, they do have thrust Yeah, yeah, but they stay there, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've really been quite quick getting it back together the second time. I thought I'd start videoing because that normally causes some complications, you know, working under pressure, everyone's watching. You like that screwdriver idea to keep it split mm, and separate? I like it. Oh, until it falls out. There's got to be something better than a screw, something flat that's the right size. And mm. then, um, there you go, extra hand holding the screwdriver. Remember to lever it in. You got it in now, didn't you? Mm -hmm. yeah? Remember you had to uh, make sure you're out this way because if you're trying to go like, because you know, so, yeah, you really got to access it from the end here, don't you? Mm -hmm. Running out of uh, material. One more. Yeah, that didn't give it anything, I don't reckon. Mm, not like before. Starting to run out of meat. It's kind of. It's not the best design, I've got to say. It's not really the best. I don't think it's coming out, but it's not really the. That's it. That'll do it. 
Yeah, that'll do it. We'll clean that up a little bit, get any bits of crap. Mm. There might be a few bits of crap, but yeah, there's definitely enough burrage there. It's not the best design for putting it in the end a couple of times, mm. is it? If you went, oh, mm. I've got a problem with this, I've got to put it back together, and then, oh, and then put it back in later. Or... Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a single use only setup, really, isn't mm -hmm. it? But, you know, we make it work, but it's there's nothing, don't expect anything to be too. But that'll do it. I like this is a full detail video and we could be wrong, but we use 97 newton meters on the bolts. So that's done. And we're about to close off these tabs, aren't we? Just mm -hmm. gently. Don't go too crazy because like I said, they can break off. As long as it's enough that it, uh, you know, that go for it. Yeah, in the vice is the go. Fix all these up. So it's back in the vehicle already. Did we finish everything? Did we tell them everything? Oh, look, we put it back exactly how it was. That's why you mark everything at the start. I think I said that at the start of the video, didn't I? I said <laughs> thoroughly mark everything. I mean, double, triple marks, pin punches, scribes, paint markers, everything. So you can see the exact mark, how deep those adjusters were, and just put it back exactly how it was. Mark left, rights, everything like that. Even use different color paint pens. <laughs> certainly go overboard if you're just going to do it like this and put it back how it was no need to do the bearings if there's nothing wrong with it uh, what else did we do uh, we talked everything up then we did the 95 newton meters on the on cap the caps, on yeah. the carry cap you know could be wrong but you know that'll do that's what we did let you know if there's a problem with that um these just going to nip them up by hand aren't we we're doing a bit of a test here we're recycling the gasket we've got new gaskets here but we want to let people know if you can't get one whether it's going to work or not. And we're confident it will work. That's why we're doing it. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it because that would be a waste of time. Anyway, so we're just going to nip all these up. I don't think we've forgotten anything else. Put it back how it was the way before. We're going to replace these seals. We'll include that in this video as well. A little bit of... No, we won't. That's boring. So you pop those out and you put the new ones in. Take note of where they are, how deep they sit and all that. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Change the seals. Put the um, propeller shaft back on. Should be here somewhere. There it is. And... Uh, Bada bing, bada boom. We put the new axle seals and that's all done. And I was just going to try and catch it. It doesn't oh, matter. We just put oh. a bit of, uh, yeah, we use the copperies because it's thick and it doesn't melt and not on the centre. On the O-ring just to help hopefully seal it up a bit. I'd even go a bit heavier on the O-ring. Sort of kind of like if the O-ring's not working, the, that thick um, copperies is just going to help seal up that gap, you know, and close up the gap. It's going to help the O-ring, worst case scenario. It's certainly not going to cause any problems. Copperies because it's thick. And high temp, so it doesn't melt. I think it's going to help keep the water out a bit. We'll do that both sides. Beautiful. And it's in. And that's what's meant to happen. Bada bing, beautiful. And there it is, case closed. Subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll let you know how it goes.